Hi, in this video we're going to prove that the harmonic series diverges. So in order to do this proof, we first need to know what it means for a series to converge. So let me just briefly recall that. So recall, if you have an infinite series that runs from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, so this can be written another way. We can write this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum as k runs from 1 to n of a sub k. So these are basically the same thing. Basically all I did was replace the infinity with an n. And so this thing here is special. This is called s sub n. And this is called the nth partial sum. So in this case, that's a really funny m, <laughs> the nth partial sum. So we can write this another way. We can write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So if this limit exists, then we say that the series converges. If it does not exist, then we say the series diverges. So whenever this exists, it's equal to a real number, which we'll call l. So that's what it means for a series to converge. So this converges. Let me just write it one more time, because I said it all in words, but I didn't really write it. So we'll say that this converges means that the limit as n approaches infinity, this one exists. So the limit of the nth partial sum exists. And what does that mean? That means that the limit is equal to a real number. So an infinite series converges if this sequence converges. So convergence of series is defined in terms of uh, convergence of sequences. Okay, so now you have to know what um, convergence of sequences means. So just to, again, there's another brief recall. Let's just go back to sequences for a minute. We'll say that um, the sequence, let's just say b sub n, as n approaches infinity, uh, converges and is equal to a real number l means for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists uh, an n greater than zero, which we will say is a positive integer, so it's in the set of positive integers, such that for all little n bigger than capital N, the distance between uh, b sub n and l can be made as small as you like. So in absolute value, it can be less than epsilon. I did that pretty quickly, but you really want to know these definitions cold even before you uh, do a proof like this. If you don't, it's okay, and hopefully this, some of this makes sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the proof. So I've already worked this proof out and I'll talk about how I did that. Um, the way I worked it out was not pretty. I just basically wrote a bunch of stuff down and tried to reach a contradiction. So we're gonna do a proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that um, this converges and then try to end up with something ridiculous. So suppose that it converges, right? So suppose that this converges. So that means that the sequence of partial sums um, converges to a number, uh, say L. So let's just say to say L, where L is some real number, right? We don't know what it is and we really can't specify it. So that means that the sequence of partial sums uh, converges. So that means that um, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer n such that this is true, except it's going to be true for s sub n, right? So this statement is going to be true, but um, it's going to be true for our specific partial sum of, of this one here. If you're curious, the partial sums in this problem, I'm, I'm going to write it up here, it's not part of the proof. The partial sums are going to be these. So it's going to be the finite sum as k runs from 1 to n of 1 over k. That's going to be the nth partial sum of the harmonic series. So this sequence converges to L. That's what we're assuming, and we're trying to reach a contradiction. So for all epsilon, we're gonna have this inequality. So when I first tried this, um, I just picked a value for epsilon. I picked one half, and I couldn't get it to work, and so then I went with one fourth, and it worked. So you just have to experiment and try. So what does this mean? So then, so this means there exists a positive integer n such that such that the difference between s sub n and l 
is less than one fourth. Okay, for all n bigger than n. Okay, that's what it means. So now, um, in order to reach a contradiction, um, I did a couple things. So first, we can drop the absolute value. So we'll have negative one fourth less than s sub n less than l less than one fourth for all n greater than n. I'm just going to write it again just for completeness. It's there. It's really small, <laughs> super tiny. So for all little n bigger than n. Now uh, we're going to look at um, s sub 2n. So note, since little n is bigger than capital N, we have 2n, also bigger than capital N. So we have that s sub 2n minus l is also less than one fourth. So we have that minus one fourth is less than s sub 2n minus l, which is less than one fourth. So now we have um, two inequalities, okay? We have one here and we have one here. And we're gonna try to reach a contradiction. This is the part that uh, took a little bit of time. And I've seen this proof before, I saw it a long time ago, so I kinda had the idea of how to do this, but um, I had to use one fourth to get it to work. So let's start by looking at S sub 2n specifically, because we need to investigate and see what that is. So note, S sub 2n, so what is it? It's This is the sum from 1 to 2n, okay? So it's going to be something like this, k equals 1 to 2n, 1 over k. All right, so now um, you can write this as the sum from 1 to n, and I'm doing that because we want to somehow incorporate s sub n as well into our proof. And then the rest of the terms. What are the rest of the terms? Well, the next one is going to be plus... 1 over m plus 1, because you plug in m plus 1 after this, right? So you're trying to get to 2n. Then 1 over m plus 2, all the way to 1 over 2n. And notice that um, now we can create an inequality, because all of these are bigger than 1 over 2n, because 2n is a bigger number than these numbers, and so it makes the fraction um, smaller. So these fractions are, all these fractions are bigger than this one. So this is greater than, I'm going to go ahead and write this as s sub n. And these are all greater than 1 over 2n plus 1 over 2n plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2n. And there's n of these, right? So this is equal to s sub n plus n times 1 over 2n. So this is equal to, let me come over here. So s sub 2n is greater than s sub n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so that's... Uh, something we're going to try to use to create a contradiction, okay? So now, um, let's try to backtrack here and use one of these inequalities to try to create a contradiction. So we know something about S sub 2n, so let's look at this one. So then, we have 1 fourth, let's read this backwards, is greater than S sub 2n minus L, okay? And we know something about s sub 2n. It's greater than s sub n plus 1 half. So this is greater than, so I'm replacing this with this, s sub n plus 1 half minus l. So now you notice we have s sub n minus l. So let's group those together to try to incorporate the other inequality. Okay. And then s sub n minus l, well, we know something about that. It's greater than negative 1 fourth. So this is greater than negative 1 fourth plus 1 half. We can write 1 half as 2 fourths. This is negative 1 fourths plus 2 fourths, which is um, equal to, um, let's see if I did that right, 1 fourth. Yep, 1 fourth. So what do we have? We have 1 fourth is greater than, okay, 1 fourth is greater than uh, 1 fourth. A contradiction. And that completes the proof. So if you're looking at this proof and you're thinking, oh wow, there's no way I'd be able to figure this out, um, you should realize that this, I, I did this before making the video. So, right, like I worked this out before making this video. A lot of times I'll, I'll do proofs on the spot. This is not one that I just did on the spot, right? I knew, um, you know, to use one fourth because um, I had I tried something else earlier and it didn't work. Um, it just ended up um, uh, failing for some reason and then so this is 
um, something that you know, did take did take some work. So yeah, that's how you do it. That's one way uh, to prove that the harmonic series diverges. I'm not saying it's the best way or anything, but it's certainly a correct way. Hopefully this video has helped you and maybe you know even this part here was new to you where you understood um, what it means for, for a series to converge and stuff. So yeah, pretty cool problem. Famous infinite series, right? Famous series. So it's a divergent, it's a divergent P series with P equals one. Remember P series, they have um, a little number here, like a P, in this case P is one. And so it diverges by the P test for infinite series if you know some calc too. Cool proof, yeah, good luck.